massive search has been launched in the southern Indian Ocean after two objects have been spotted on satellite imagery that could possibly be debris from Flight 370. Well, joining me now here in Hong Kong is transport editor Jeffrey Ng and in Sydney, reporter James Glynn. Okay, James, let's start with you. Uh, Australian officials earlier uh, released these images. What type of search is underway right now? Okay, Deborah, immediately uh, four aircraft were sent to the area. This is an area about 1,600 kilometres, uh, sorry, miles off, uh, off Perth, southwest of Perth. This is the Great Southern Ocean. It's, uh, it's a very tough area to search for. This is big waves. This is the roaring 40s. This is a, um, a bit of a nightmare scenario, really, for the searchers. And they've told us that weather is poor. So uh, night will fall in the region in the next couple of hours. That will obviously eliminate any uh, visual uh, aspect to the search, but they will fall back. These are fairly sophisticated aircraft. There is two from Australia, one from New Zealand, and a P-8 aircraft from the US, uh, which is a very sophisticated aircraft, and they will be able to search the area into the night. Okay, and what this satellite showed, one of the objects could have been possibly around uh, 24 metres uh, long. That's, that's quite large. Um, but what type of technology, I mean, is it possible for the planes, if, if the uh, object is submerged underwater, for the planes to actually detect uh, what it is below the water? I think it is. These are um, normally uh, submarine hunting aircraft. I know the Australian PRC uh, Orions are dispatched for that often, so I would anticipate they can look underwater. Um, they, as I said, they have very sophisticated radar. Uh, they're often patrolling the, the Great Southern Ocean, um, where Australia has territories. They're looking uh, in the yeah, northern uh, seas as well. Um, they can see over a long distance and see as quite small objects in the water. Okay, and turning to Jeffrey now. Okay, Jeffrey, obviously um, an extensive search underway, but now we are, uh, you know, over two weeks on since this plane went missing. So even if they do spot debris, how likely is it that they're going to be able to locate the plane? Well, the most important thing, Gabra, is to locate the two black boxes, the flight data recorder and the voice recorder on the, on the aircraft. Both of these recorders have uh, would emit a ping, uh, a, a, a radio signal, if you will, uh, for 30 days after a plane crash, or if the aircraft um, reach, reach, reaches water, touches water, then the pings will automatically come on. About 12 days, to be exact, have passed since this aircraft allegedly have disappeared, and, and in this case, pres uh, presumably, have crashed into the ocean, and there are now 18 days left to detect these pings and to locate the black boxes of the aircraft. When we look back at the Air France incident, the 449 incident in 2009, they found the tail of the aircraft, a very conspicuous part of the plane, five days after the uh, crash, but they never found the black boxes until what it was two years later. So many experts are telling us not to keep our hopes too high that the big part of the wreckage will be found anytime soon, even if debris right. can be located and confirmed to be from the aircraft. Right. And uh, James, as you had pointed out, uh, you said that, you know, it's almost nighttime, obviously, in the area that they're searching. Um, so uh, can we expect if they don't find anything by dark, uh, nothing will be found overnight? Yeah, I, I think there's uh, a strong chance they will continue to search. The, the other aspect of this is that the maritime safety people here have told us that this is deep water. This is um, many thousands of feet deep. They didn't give us a number, but uh, I think that, that tells you what the situation is like. So they will be able to see what's on the surface, but if anything is sunk to the bottom, it's probably uh, over a large area and many fathoms deep. So that aspect of the search is going to be tough. But and I, I'm James, when, going when, to go is, on. when are the first ships expected to arrive uh, in, the re in the area? I think there's a, there is a maritime, uh, sorry, a merchant ship due very soon. Um, its capabilities, I don't know. It's just been diverted um, by the maritime safety people. The HMAS Success is a much larger air, uh, um, ship. It's moving into the area. It'll be there, I think, uh, in the next few days. It's, as I said, it's a long way offshore and uh, takes a long time for a ship to get there. But this is a large ship. It has uh, cranes aboard. It will be able to retrieve from the ocean whatever whatever they find. So. That's the moment I think we're all waiting for. I think uh, a bit of visual confirmation, some high-definition photos coming from the aircraft, 
but it's that moment when something is dragged out of the water and they can confidently say that this is part of the aircraft. But there is a lot of conjecture. This whole story has been f filled with conjecture. So uh, when Tony Abbott, our Prime Minister, got up in Parliament and announced this news today, he urged caution that this may just be another red herring. Let's hope for some sort of closure, though. Yes, of course. And we will just have to wait to get any type of confirmation uh, to see about that possibility. Thanks very much, James Glynn, joining us in Sydney. And, of course, to Jeffrey Ng here in Hong Kong. For more on this story, we will keep you updated on WSJ.com.